that can claim December 25th as their birthday is Cap Calloway, Jimmy Buffett, Humphrey Bogart, Claire Barton, Dido, Anwar Sadat, Carl Rove. You got lots of uh, gods who were born on December 25th also. You had Krishna of India was born December 25th, 3228 B.C. You had Apollo, Addis, Bacchus, Dionysus, Helios, Helios, H-E-L-I-O-S, Horus, Jupiter, Krishna, Mithras, Nimrod, Perseus, Tammuz, Sol Invictus, Buddha, Hercules, and Moon Ra, uh, the sun god Ra, Zeus, uh, Quetzal, Quetzalcoatl, Prometheus, Hermes, Hercules, and Bedal. So, right, Horus, Buddha, Mithra, Bedal, Addis, Sol Invictus, Prometheus, Bacchus, Hermes, Tammuz, Hercules, Buddha. So all these gods can claim December 25th as their birthday, right? Krishna, Mithra, uh, Zoroaster. Well, Zoroaster, I don't know if it was actually born. So besides Zoroaster, every other name that I had just named, and Jesus Christ are the only two um, people that we can say definitely were not born on December 25th. There's the um, there's some big festival, actually, the the Tabernacle, the, the Feast of the Tabernacles. Uh, it was in late fall is when Jesus was actually born. It was designated by a pope. So December 25th has never been Jesus' birthday. It hasn't been for a long-ass time. But it was the birthday of many Jesus-like gods. So it almost makes you wonder, all these different religions... Could it have been possible that Christianity is just the greatest hoax to all of mankind? Is this possible that they accepted and took all these different myths from all these different religions and gods and created their own uh, Jesus, pacifist, one who would pay his taxes, one that was turning the other cheek and did whatever? Is it possible that they just created this shit out of thin air? I think it's possible. So, Sol Invictus, this was created in 274 AD by the Roman Emperor or Aurelian, A-U-R-E-L-I-A-N, Aurelian, Roman Emperor, and, um, and it was, uh, Marcus Aurelius was part of it, that was on their coins, the Roman Empire had Sol Invictus, uh, you know, imagery on their coins until Constantine turned it to Christianity. Lots of December 25th. Uh, Bacchus was born on December 25th. He was crucified. Hermes was born on December 25th. Was the son of the Virgin Maia. Member of the Holy Trinity. Hermes, Tris, Megistus. Tammuz was born to a virgin named Mylitta. Born on December 25th. Prometheus, born on December 25th. Descended from heaven as a God incarnate as man to save mankind. Crucified, suffered, and was redeemed from death. Uh, Heracles was bo born December 25th, 800 BCE, to a virgin and was sacrificed at the spring equinox. Buddha was born on December 25th, uh, 563 BCE, so over 500 years before uh, Jesus was to have said to have been born. Born of the virgin Maya, the queen of heaven, announced by a star, attended by wise men, presenting costly gifts. At his birth, Brahma, angels sang hymns. Tempted by Mara, the evil one, while fasting, but overcame the temptation, putting the evil one to flight, taught in the temple at age 12, was able to match the wise religious scholars in their understanding. He healed the sick, fed 500 from the small basket of cakes, walked on water. Buddha's disciple wanted to hear his Lord preach, so he started to cross a stream. He doubted, started to sink, but he built up his faith and continued to walk across the water. Came to fulfill the law and preach the establishment of a kingdom of righteousness. He obliged followers to live in poverty and to renounce the world. In his final final years, Buddha was said to have crushed a serpent's head and to have been transfigured on a mount. It was Buddha, not Christ, who first said, If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Krishna, born 1400 BCE, probably as early as 5771 BCE, born of the virgin Devaki, a.k.a. the Divine One, born on December 25th. His earthly father was a carpenter off in the city paying taxes when Krishna was born. 
Krishna's birth was signaled by a star in the east and attended by angels and shepherds at which he was presented with spices. Heavenly hosts danced and sang at Krishna's birth. Uh, Krishna was persecuted by a tyrant who ordered the slaughter of thousands of infants. Krishna was anointed on the head with oil by a woman whom he healed. Krishna depicted as having his foot on the head of a serpent. Krishna worked miracles and wonders, raising the dead, healing lepers, the deaf, and the blind. Krishna used parables to teach people about charity and love, and he lived poor and he loved the poor. Krishna castigated the clergy, charging them with ambition and hypocrisy. Tradition says he fell victim to their vengeance. Krishna's beloved disciple was Ojurnia or Ojuan. He was transfigured in front of his disciples, gave his twelve disciples the ability to work miracles. His path was strewn with branches. Krishna died on a tree, was crucified between two thieves. Krishna was killed around the age of 80 and the sun darkened at his death. Krishna arose from the dead and ascended to heaven in the sight of all men. Krishna depicted on a cross with nails, holes in his feet as well and having a heart emblem on his clothing. Krishna is known as the lion of the tribe of Saki. He was also called the shepherd of God, considered the redeemer, firstborn, sin bearer, liberator, universal world, universal word, deemed the son of God, our Lord and Savior. Krishna came to earth to die for man's salvation. The second person in the Trinity is Krishna's disciples purportedly bestowed upon him the title Jesuit or Jesus, meaning pure essence. So Krishna's name was even Jesus, right? Mithra of Persia, 600 BCE, born of a virgin on December 25th in a cave. His birth was attended by shepherds bearing gifts. Uh, Mithra of Persia, considered a great traveling teacher and master. Mithra of Persia had 12 companions or disciples. Mithra had followers who were promised immortality. He performed miracles, the great bull of the sun. Mithra sacrificed himself for world peace. Mithra was buried in a tomb. After three days, he rose again. Resurrection was celebrated every year. Mithra is called the Good Shepherd, identified with both the Lamb and the Lion, considered the way, the truth, and the light, and the Logos, Word, Redeemer, Savior, and Messiah. Mithra, the sacred day was Sunday, the Lord's Day, hundreds of years before the appearance of Christ. Mithra had his principal festival on what was later to become Easter. His religion had a Eucharist or a Lord's Supper at which Mithra said, He who shall not eat of my body nor drink of my blood so that he may be one with me and I with him shall not be saved. Mithra's annual sacrifice is the Passover of the Magi, a symbolic atonement, a pledge of moral and physical regeneration. Also, the Vatican was built upon the papacy of Mithra, and the Christian hierarchy is nearly identical to the Myth Mithraic version. It replaced virtually all the elements of the Catholic ritual, from the mitre to wafer to altar to doxology, are taken directly from the earlier pagan mystery religions. Mithraism was one of the major religions of the Roman Empire, which was derived from the ancient Persian god of light and wisdom. The cult of Mithraism was quite prominent in ancient Rome, especially among the military. Mithra was the god of war, battle, justice, faith, and contract. According to Mithraism, Mithra was called the son of God, was born of a virgin, had disciples, was crucified, rose from the dead on the third day, atoned for the sins of mankind, and returned to heaven. Therefore, the critics maintain that Christianity borrowed its concepts from the Mithra cult. Gods who are similar to Jesus Christ, Zoroaster, Zoroastrusta, 1000 BCE, maybe earlier. So Zoroaster was born of a 15-year-old virgin, Dugahava, an immaculate conception by a ray of divine reason. He was baptized in a river. In his youth, he astounded wise men with his wisdom, was tempted in the wilderness by the devil, began his ministry at age 30, wandered around with 12 followers, baptized with water, fire, and holy wind, cast out demons, and restored the sight to a blind man. This is Zoroaster, right? Zoroaster began his ministry at age 30, Twelve followers, baptized with water. Uh, Zoroaster taught about heaven and hell, revealed mysteries including resurrection, judgment, salvation. The apocalypse had a separate, sacred cup or grail. Zoroaster was slain. His religion had a Eucharist. He was the word made flesh. Zoroaster's followers expected a second coming in the virgin born Saoshient, or Savior, who is to come in the year 2341 CE and begin his ministry at age 30, ushering in a golden age. So in 300 years, we're supposed to have a second coming of the Zoroaster. The Zoroaster's coming back. So the reason why all these celebrations, had, um, all these religious cults had a celebration on December 25th, most of them is basically because of astro astronomy and how the sun and the, uh, the relationship to the earth, 
how it all works out. So it's because that the day that the day beats the night. You got winter solstice, okay? So from the point on, um, you know, from all the way from the summer solstice to the winter solstice, the day was getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And then on the winter solstice, it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's getting colder and colder and colder. So the summer solstice is the dead heat of summer, right? It's very middle, but it's the, it's the most that it's going to get. So it's going to get colder from every day. And so it's the, the same thing with the winter solstice. It happens on the 22nd of December and happens for about three days. The sun just sits in the same spot. And back in the day, they didn't know what was happening. But in the, uh, the ancients, they basically said, well, the sun is fighting back on those three days. It's like I'm tired of getting, you know, the shorter and shorter days. So it's time for the, Kong to, the, the sun to conquer. So the cult of Sol Invictus was about the unconquerable sun, right? So the 22nd would be when the winter solstice happens. And then uh, for about three days, the sun would just sit there. And then on the third day, it would start to move back um, in the direction to where you're going to have longer days. And so because you had longer days, that was resurrection. That was rebirth. That was the unconquerable sun finally beating the, the darkness. The, the daylight defeated the night. And now we're going to have longer days. And that's what all these religions were based on. This birth, uh, you know, this death and then rebirth was based on the suns and about it based on seasonal um, celebrations. So the winter solstice happened every year. And so they knew what was going to happen, but just to make sure, you know, they give uh, homage to all their gods. Constellations had something to do with it. The Southern Cross constellation. I don't know. The 22nd winter solstice... Uh, moves one degree north the sun died on the cross so just like jesus cross the sun dies on the cross for three days to be reborn again on the third day to go back into heaven um the sun right so the sun goes back up into the heavens above sirius is the bright star in the east so that's why you have all these bright stars in the east uh, where they followed them the three bright stars in orion's belt represents the three kings the point to the sunrise on december 25th um, three kings follow the bright star to the sunrise. So the spring equinox um, is when, well, that's past the winter solstice, but that's when, um, but I don't know why the spring equinox is even. So the spring equinox, <laughs> and there's a fall equinox, and the summer and winter solstice. So you got spring and fall equinoxes, and then you got summer and winter solstice. And they're all important. So to know when spring is happening, and summer, and fall, and winter. Winds in the dead of winter. Actually, I've heard, um, you know, uh, uh, December, January, and February are the coldest months there. So, if anything, it's not really the dead of winter. It's when winter begins. Is the is Christmas, and then the springtime is March 21st, right around St. Patrick's Day, um, which is when things start to get warmer. So, get ready. Things are going to get warmer. Fourth of July is about the summer solstice. And that's when, you know, the dead heat of summer, and then it starts to go get colder from then on. And then you got Christmas, which lands right on wintertime. And then a lot of the other in between, you know, the, um, the Thanksgiving was a green, green corn uh, harvest. So the end of the year harvest. And then the uh, Halloween was sort of the end of the year harvest, too. The, the Samhain for the Celtics, they would slaughter their pigs or their cows and uh, get ready for the, the wintertime. And then uh, the Groundhog's Day was in between uh, the spring solstice and the winter solstice to say, hey, winter's coming, or spring, winter's about to be over, spring is on its way. So have no fear, here comes winter, or here comes spring. The Catholic Church, uh, which is, Catholic means universal, they wanted to assemble all the many religions of the Roman people into one universal religion. So they started to create their own holidays, but they used similar symbols, dates, stories in order to co opt these so called pagan festivals and holidays, which is one of the reasons why St. Patrick actually was su successful in Ireland. Catholic Church combined Samhain and All Souls Day, All Saints Day, to become Halloween in order to cover up Samhain, Samhain. The popular end of the harvest season of the Gaelic Celtic festival. Christmas is a cover up for Saturnalia, a Roman holiday celebrating the farm god Saturn. Valentine's Day gobbled up Lupercalia, another popular Roman holiday designated and covered up by the Catholic Church. So it's no surprise that this is what the Catholic Church has been doing for quite some time co opting pagan religions. 
Um, the Valentine of Rome, it's total bullshit, but it is said that he kept on marrying folks in spite of the Roman Emperor Claudius II ordering all marriages banned so he'd have more cannon fodder to be expendable stormtroopers for his Roman Empire, but this is total bullshit. Complete fabrication because Emperor Claudius II actually never issued this marriage ban. In fact, Claudius II told his soldiers to take two or three women for themselves after his victory over the Goths. So don't just marry one, marry many. So the entire St. Valentine's story is complete bullshit. Valentine's Day is established by the Catholic Church in 496 A.D. on February 14th by Pope Galatius I in order to cover up the wildly popular Roman pagan ritual of Lupercalia.